You know when you see people delivering talks and presentations and they do it really naturally and succinctly without any kind of prompts or cards or notes or even slides? Do you wonder how they do that? Well, it's actually something that anyone can achieve. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can deliver keynote talks or presentations without the need for any type of note, slide or crutch and deliver it confidently and naturally creating maximum connection and audience engagement. But first, if I don't know you and you don't know me, I'm Helen Packham. I'm a leadership behavior specialist and I help coaches, consultants and small business owners 10 times the impact of their communication. And over the years, I've studied and I've learned firsthand how to understand the psychology behind natural and impactful speaking. And I've helped many people overcome nerves and social phobias around speaking. And I've also overcome crippling anxiety myself. Before we go any further, hit subscribe for more videos focusing on how you can speak more authentically, talk more honestly and make a lasting impression with every word. So let's get down to it, shall we? First, we need to understand how using notes and prompts and scripts can actually cause more anxiety and nerves when speaking. The first is what I like to refer to as the over-reliance crutch. Now, when you rely heavily on notes or prompts, you may become anxious about losing your place or forgetting key points. And this dependency can actually create fear of being unable to continue if the prompts are misplaced or unavailable. Now, I did this. I auditioned for a consultant role in a very big training firm. Throughout the whole audition, I was completely reliant on my notes. I didn't connect with the audience. And of course, I didn't get the gig. Another element to this is the robotic delivery. Now, if you follow a script, then you're rigid around it and can actually result in unnatural delivery. And you may become preoccupied with adhering to exact wording and that can sacrifice spontaneity and authenticity. And this can actually amplify your anxiety because you're worrying about deviating from the script. And this is because when we're remembering stuff as a script, it's actually a different part of our brain that we're using rather than the opposite way that I'm going to share with you shortly. Not allowing for curveballs is another thing that can trip you up because in unforeseen circumstances that arise, such as technical issues or questions from the audience, you can rely on scripts and may struggle to adapt. So this inflexibility can heighten anxiety and you might feel unprepared to handle unexpected situations. In my early training career, I had this situation. I was working for a rapidly growing company and they didn't have the resources to deliver the training that we needed to. And one day there was no training room. There was no way of delivering the presentation. And so I had to take a flip chart and the class of students out to a graveyard and deliver it there. So that was a very steep learning curve for me then. The next thing is word for word panic. So the fear of forgetting lines or losing track of the script can actually significantly increase anxiety levels. So you may experience performance anxiety or worry about memory lapses or blanking or losing your place. And of course, this can lead to self-doubt and apprehension. And I've had many clients and I've done this myself where reliance on remembering word for word can actually trip you up and prevent you from delivering a much more well-rounded, more engaging talk with presence because you're relying on that word for word memory. And finally, putting up the fourth wall is something that happens when we rely on notes, because if you're constantly referring to notes or prompts, it can hinder you from engaging effectively with the audience. And this lack of connection can exacerbate feelings of isolation and you can struggle to establish rapport. Someone said once it's like when you stand on the stage, you hold out your hand and it's the audience decision to take that hand and go on a dance with you. And when you have that fourth wall up where you're relying on notes, then you're breaking that connection and the ability to build rapport with the audience. So what do we do instead? Well, first we need to understand about encoding, storage and retrieval. And then I'm going to share with you how you actually do this. So keep watching for that. But first, let's talk about encoding. Now, in the context of public speaking, effective encoding involves actively engaging with the material being presented for deep processing. So that means relating to the information and connecting it with personal experiences, emotions, stories, and visual anchors to enhance that encoding experience and improve your memory retention. Then there is the storage of the information and effective storage of presentation material involves rehearsal and repetition to strengthen your memory traces and put it into your long-term memory. And also organizing the information into meaningful structures or patterns can also aid this storage. 
And lastly, memory retrieval. And in public speaking, effective retrieval involves recalling the key points, examples, and supporting evidence during your presentation without relying on notes or prompts. And this requires a thorough understanding of your material, practice rehearsal, and the confidence in your ability to recall the information. So now that we've understood the psychology, the scientific and cognitive psychology behind this, I'm going to share with you the techniques that I've used and I've helped my clients use to encode, store and retrieve the content of your talk and presentation so that you can speak with natural confidence, engage with your audience and make a big impact with your words. So step one is making encoding fun. So in order to know your material inside out, it's about starting in the right place and you do that by creating visual anchors, stories, memories and attaching emotions to the key points of your talk. Doing this will help you encode it in a fun, colourful, vibrant way so that you store it effectively ready for retrieval later on. And in other videos which will be coming up, I'm going to be talking more about talk structures, but for today we're talking about how to actually memorise them. Step two is about chunking it up. So rather than relying on a word for word script to memorise, you create visual anchors to do that. And the way that I have done this, and I've done it many, many times, is getting a flip chart and either putting an image or drawing an image or creating a title for the story I want to tell or the memory I want to create or the piece of research or data and putting a few bullet points for that. So big chunk, imagine a circle around each chunk of your talk and that's going to go left to right on your flip chart, which you'll then put up at eye level when you rehearse. Step three is about linking that all together. So these are referred to as segs or segways. Imagine a link chain. You've got the key chunks of your talk, which have your visual anchors and your keywords, your bullet points. And then a seg links those things together with a phrase or a sentence brings it all together in a flow. Getting clear on that will also help you store the information so you remember it in a sequence. And step four is that no rehearsal is the same. Now, this allows for spontaneity and improvisation and any type of disruption that you might have. If you lose your place, you know where to come back to because you've got the core pieces of your talk memorized in big chunk form. So I had 24 hours to rehearse for my TEDx talk, create it and rehearse it. So I could only use this method for memorizing my talk. So I did exactly as I've explained. I put a 15 minute timer and every time I rehearsed, it came out different, but that helped to strengthen the storage of my content so that I did do it with ease. And doing all of this does help with engagement because when you are visualizing what you are recalling that you've stored by your encoding, you are engaging with the audience. You're not relying on prompts or scripts or notes, and that can help you really connect and build rapport. And one top tip, which we've recently discovered, is my client Tony, when he was practicing for his TED talk, we started with slides in his preparation, and then he removed those slides, but still remembered the visual anchors for each point of his talk. So hopefully doing this will enable you to confidently remember the structure of your presentation or your talk without the need for notes or visual clues. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Please comment below and don't forget to click subscribe for more videos like this.